Joining us in our Cracked Rackets booth now is our tournament director here for this week's Altic Steislinger Tennis Exhibition. Of course, you also know him as a three-time national champion from the University of Virginia and honestly, Mr. Miami this week, JC Aragoni. JC, thank you for having our Cracked Rackets team down here. How are you feeling on day three? Um, I'm happy. I'm in the pool. I'm relaxed. You know, it's been it's been a stressful week, but finally it, it seems like it's coming to an end. So um, I'm excited to have this end, but at the same time, I think we've both had fun. You're over there sipping vodka. <laughs> I think it's been a good week. Um, again, like I mentioned earlier, my, my house is, my apartment is like disaster. It's like a frat house. We got dishes all over. I got the strings from the last 15 rackets. I've had a string for these guys. So there's just like green gut everywhere. It's a disaster. I don't know how I'm going to clean this up, but it's going to take a few days. Yeah, for no, sure. No, I mean, again, I, a huge shout out to you for getting this all together. An eight person event at a house like this, this sort of event. And again, a bunch of sponsors who we want to give shout out to for helping to support, obviously, Eleven Vodka. Uh, big supporters of this event. We are at the Eleven Vodka household, of course, as well. So big yeah. thank you uh, to both Mike and Nikki for having us this weekend. Yeah, you know, for you today, you got to win. You're on the board, one and two. Uh, how did that feel? How did you feel about your level of play this week? Um, I thought it improved every day. I thought the first day I was just so stressed I we had issues with the permit the first day not issues but just you know standard protocols they had to check everything to make sure we're doing the right things and I was just super stressed so I think the first day was um, I was not happy with the performance but I was happy to get through the day and then yesterday I was more relaxed I played better and then I thought today was was the best of the three days I thought I was serving well I thought the you know things were just kind of going flowing better and I, if I you know for me that was that was great to be able to each day just perform a little better shows that um, I'm getting back into the form and even though I am organizing and playing which is very difficult I can at least end on somewhat of a high of a good note mm -hmm. yeah no absolutely and again a win's a win to beat Stevie J to a top 100 player you'll yeah, take the scalp I'm yeah, I'll sure take it, I'll take yeah it. Uh, for you now again last yeah. question about this and then I want to have some fun we're in the pool fast four formats the tournament uh, format so I want to do fast four here with you some quick questions but you know obviously to be a tournament director be by scenes uh, you sort of joked about it as well uh, will there be a second Altic Steislinger tennis exhibition run by JC Aragoni I don't know Catherine <laughs> is ready to kill me man <laughs> she has been I mean she also has two other kind of part-time jobs she does so she's been juggling a lot and she's basically taken over a lot of the stuff especially while I'm playing because I you know I need help and she's been the you know kind of the backbone so of course you know I, I put in hours and hours and I, I don't necessarily mind it but it is very stressful to do it without a team mm -hmm. you know I can imagine a lot of these events like even the one in Atlanta is run you know at the Atlanta tournament and the Charleston one was at you know by the tournament director of Charleston and you know these organizations have teams and have people and have lawyers and for me you know I kind of was it was the two people show that I had to figure everything out and you know it, it really is a lot harder I'm sure the second time around will be a lot easier and will go smoother because I know kind of what steps to take but mm -hmm. um yeah, it was kind of a grind. Yeah, again, if you ever need us, Commander, just call us in. We will be the, we will fill out the army that you and Catherine need. And so, you know, we are so grateful that you had us. All right, let's have some fun. Again, we're in the pool here. It's very rare that you get to do a poolside interview yeah, show. Yeah, you never even wear sunglasses. This is the first time you I had know, shades. First provided time, by me, thankfully. You know, I got a sponsor. I got my man some shades who apparently has exactly. never owned any. I have any. been telling my friends for a year because when I was in college, there was way too much Virginia men's tennis going on my screen. I said that fanship would pay off someday, these Revo sunglasses. Exactly, have definitely helped exactly. them pay off, but let's have some fun. All the players here this weekend, let's start with them. Who is the player who is, whose racket is the least enjoyable to string? Sangren. Oh really? my god, I have messed up his racket. He's got the H22, so it's like a 16 by 18 string pattern, but somehow it has an extra hole. I don't even know. They say 16 by 18, but they're liars. Yeah. It's not. It's like you gotta. It blew my mind. So. His was by far the most difficult, and then last night I lost half of his gut string, which I don't know where the hell I put it. So he was, I had to make him walk over at 10 o'clock at night to, to pick up, you know, more string. I felt terrible, so he's gonna kill me. Um, but yeah, everyone else has been smooth sailing, but his has been a pain. Yeah, no, that's. There's funny. always one guy. Yeah, no, there's always one. Again, it wouldn't be a tournament if there wasn't. All right, with the theme again of your fellow players, let's say in the theme of this COVID-19, and by the way, you deserve major props for ensuring all safety and health protocols were followed this week. And it, I think I can speak for everyone because I've been on the grounds. Everyone feels comfortable with this event and particularly following the Adria Tour. Uh, that's a great thing. So shout out to you. Yeah, we even have 
have six feet here, yeah, you know, exactly. More provided than six. by vodka. Yeah. We measured it not with rulers, but with vodka. Yeah, because that's what you do at the <laughs> Altic Size Slinger Tennis Exhibition. Um, but with that, let's say, you know, the, the ATP says, you know what, all of you guys at the Altic Size Slinger, that's your eight. You're quarantined together, you're traveling to events together. You get to pick one of the players in this event to be your travel with coach for the next year. Who are you picking? I got to go with Sangren. Really? I think he's very methodical of how he thinks about tennis. Um, he's always given me pointers. I think he understands the sport well. He's he, he's just a very he's he's not a very um, you know loud guy, outspoken guy. But when he does say things, I feel like he puts a lot of thought into it, and mm-hmm. he makes sure that it, it's helpful. And you know, a lot of guys sometimes just talk to just kind of you yeah, know BS. talk. Yeah, you exactly. know, and I feel like with him, he's completely different than that. So. Um, I think as a coach, I think he'd be great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Tom, no. I said that. I, yeah, no, I'm sure there's a future there for him as well. Um, all right, same thing. The theme is all of the players. Uh, you get to take one skill, one part of the game of any of the guys in Rilo this Puka event. serve. Okay, but so you don't get to be <laughs> – yeah, that, that's the obvious one, right? Um, let's say, though, if you take his serve, you have to be seven feet tall the rest of your life. Are you okay with that? Yeah, I'd like to see what it's like <laughs> to live in his – you know, I don't judge. <laughs> yeah. I think it'd be an experience for sure. Yeah, hopefully Might Catherine be tough likes tough buying it. clothes, but he seems to pull it off, so. Yeah, no, I mean, for sure. The Fila, he's rocking, looks good. Um, no, that's awesome. All right, well, for you again, all the players are calling their own lines this week. You are a college tennis player. The worst you have ever hooked someone. Past. I don't know. I, I don't think I've ever hooked someone bad, but practice for sure. <laughs> like with the guys just trying to piss guys. We used to always piss off Luca because he's very emotional, so if you call a line out, you know, on purpose, he gets mm-hmm. so, you know, he, he just doesn't like it at all. So we used to purposely try to hook him, or DT actually, DT was the worst because <laughs> he would get so mad, he'd break rackets in practice and whatever. So we would honestly try to hook him, just A, to beat him because we couldn't lose the DT, and he would just lose his marbles. <laughs> no, that sounds awesome. Well, again, we have been so fortunate to have an incredible line judge with us this week. The most frustrated you've ever been with an official. He's been a trooper. You know how hot it is out there for like six six hours in a row, and he's sitting there. Uh, you know, he's just been taking L's left and right. I told him I'd bring him his check today, and I forgot, so now i got to mail it to him. He's, he's uh, yeah, it's not been a good week for him, mm-hmm. so I but feel bad for him. him excluded, what is the most angry you have ever been with an official? Um, I think I've snapped on Roger. I don't know if you know him. He's one of the of USTA course. umps. A lot of guys have snapped on him. I think yeah. I've... I've definitely taken it too far. Mm-hmm. Um, I was playing... Canada when you gave the racket away? Yeah, that was bad. But it, with Roger, I was playing in Tiburon, and I was playing no Rubin, and it was like 6-5, me break point, like set points, mm-hmm. and the ball was out by like a foot. And he called it in, and I swear I stopped the point, and I made everyone in the crowd, full crowd there, <laughs> stand up if they believed the ball was out. And a ton of people stood up, and I started counting them out loud. <laughs> And he, and, and he was like, JC, stop it. And I got, no, you're going to sit there and enjoy this. And I started counting. I got in a lot of trouble. But, uh, yeah, I had to apologize for that one. But it was not a good look overall. It's a, yes, great story. But, yeah, no. That, I look like an ass. I, yeah, no, no, it's fair. Whatever. Um, all right, well, then, with that theme of contention in the air, any player on tour, you're at the bar, you get in a fight, who do you want having your back? Sam Groth. <laughs> good answer. I feel like he re- he's retired, but... He's just such a big body, I feel like. He could take a hit, yeah. he could dish it back. Although I, he is kind of a nice guy, so I don't know if he would. Mm-hmm. I just, I don't know. I, I, I've always been like, that guy I feel like Verdasco swat. for me. Verdasco's the guy who, I just feel like he can get angry. He's yeah. big. I just feel like he's too into his body. He wouldn't want to take a hit. <laughs> like, if he took a hit, he's going to get bruised, you know? Like, can't mess the, with a the figure. Yeah, no, that's, again, yeah, too pretty. Too pretty, for sure. Um, all right, well, again, a home stretch here of questions because we really appreciate it. I know you got to get back to work. Um, but for you, big three, Roger, Rafa, Novak, they're all in their prime. Who's the best player? I mean, right now i got to go with Novak, but I, I'm i not a Novak fan. I'm a Fed fan for okay. life. But, like, I don't know. When was he really, really good? Like 03? 06 to 0, or 04 to yeah. 07. He averaged 90% uh, winning, 90% yeah, of like his matches years per year. Was, were a joke. Like, I used to yeah. love watching him play. Like, when he lost to Djokovic at the U.S. Open in 2012, maybe, mm-hmm. that he lost 7 5 in the fifth, I was yeah. there and I was just, like, ready to cry. <laughs> I was so heartbroken when Djokovic made that, you know, return at 40 15, 5 4 cross court to, mm-hmm. you know. I was like, what the hell? This sucks. <laughs> but, yeah, Fed for me has always been a huge, huge fan. No. Who do you think would be the toughest matchup for you? I think Fed. 
takes time so well and he has a slice. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, they're all, they'd all kick my yeah. ass. <laughs> I think the matchup wise, Fetter really yeah. takes it. Like, at least with. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. It's popping bottles. I know, popping bottles. Fet, at least with, with the Roth, I feel like you'd get into a couple points. Mm-hmm. Like. But yeah, I think that it'd all be tough. Yeah, I no. can't. <laughs> um, well, yeah, of course. Uh, again, if there was any match you can go back, win or lose from your past that you could replay, what would you pick? Ooh, replay a match. I don't know. I've lost a bunch of seven, six, and the thirds that have cost me. Um, I mean, if you tell me, hey, guarantee win, I'd go back and beat you know Kevin Anderson first round of the Open. But <laughs> yeah. um, just replay a match. I don't know. I have too many that have caused me to lose sleep at night. Where's the Herco at the National Indoors rank? Top five or nah? You're, but we be, I beat him. Yeah, so but I'm saying you, you you could replay it just to experience the win. Oh, you're saying that one was pretty cool because that kind of started that whole year. Yeah. Um, I don't know if we would have won as much if we didn't have that kind of mm-hmm. confidence going in. So mm-hmm. that one was pretty amazing. And The backhand cross court against Jack Murray, the winner, that national one championship. Pre- that one was three. pretty good. Yeah, That's a you nice can't, one. all of the college ones were yeah, unbelievable. Okay. Yeah, so throw that on the list. Yeah, for well. sure. That's awesome. Well, again, uh, we've had, you know, I know you, you know, so much you've gotten from sponsors again i want to give a huge shout out and uh people who know me know i'm not on i'm drinking a little vodka i really have embraced this miami experience um yeah, you but have. for you i know uh, our friends at diet provide the balls for this weekend uh, you know what have you thought about the balls this week and just diet yeah, and thought, having them i thought they were great i thought um you know we we actually just made it uh, with the balls we had three <laughs> cases and we used exactly three cases so it worked out perfectly i thought the balls were you know very similar to the u.s open um None of the guys have complained. I think they all were, you know, happy to play with them. Again, guys, that's the one thing guys complain about is balls. So to go through a tournament without a single complaint about a a ball tells you that, you know, it's something good. They're on the right track. So hopefully they get more, you know, tournament directors to believe in them, use their balls, and, uh, you know, keep moving forward because I think they they could do a lot of good for the sport. Mm -hmm. Huge shout-out to you, JC, to pull this off, the Olympics, the Eislinger, Tennessee. Anytime you want to do this again, just ring our bell and we'll be here. All right, perfect. Thank you, guys.